From Woke to Awakening, Ephesians chapter 5, we're going to be looking at verses 15 through 21. Redeeming the Time Brothers podcast, a podcast by Gene Kissinger and Norman Kissinger, two brothers who have spent their lives in ministry and raising large families. Our desire is to provide a digital place for those who long to belong, and we are producing discipleship tools and spreading them across multiple platforms to bring about a rapture ready body of believers so that when Jesus Christ comes back he will have no trouble recognizing his own. The nightlight is out of Ephesians chapter 5 starting in verse 15 down through verse 21. It says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as wise, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another, and in the fear of God. I was reading a quote. I want to read the quote, and then I want to tell you where the quote took me. The quote is out of Chuck Swindoll's book, The Mystery of God's Will. And he's writing about Jonathan Edwards, which sort of sparked a study. I'm going to read the quote, and then we're going to dig into what I I discovered. God tells us not to be foolish, but wise, making the most of our time, taking every opportunity that comes our way and using it wisely. Before his 20th birthday, Jonathan Edwards, the brilliant and godly philosopher theologian who became God's instrument of the Great Awakening, the revival of the 18th century, resolved never to lose one moment of time, but to improve it in the most profitable way I possibly can. That is exactly what he did, using the well using <clears throat> well the intellectual gifts God had given him. He entered Yale at 13. And at 17, he graduated as head of his class. And at 26, he was the minister of one of the largest congregations in Massachusetts. Following the will of God requires wisdom, clear thinking, and yes, even good old garden variety common sense. Man, I was just impressed by his use of time. He would go on to also become the, the founding president of Princeton which at the time was a theological seminary. And I got to reading about the Great Awakening, and I thought, <clears throat> the young people now are always talking about being woke, and most of the ones that I've encountered, what they mean by being woke is is that they speak loudly on social media about social issues, and it's okay to voice your opinion. I think we should, we should be able to voice our opinion. We should have a, a free speech. I firmly believe in that. But I think maybe... They're looking for something deeper and they don't know it. And I was sort of struck by the parallel between being woke and then the Great Awakening. Early, in as early as 1720, uh, the colonies had experienced a backsliding, if you will. Bars were popping up everywhere. People's morals were incredibly lax. The, the, the founding piety of our nation in the in the mid 1600s and early 1700s it began to wane we had to push back the the frontier and wealth was beginning to accrue people were beginning to be a part of formal religion without having any real connection with god so they would go to church on sunday but that didn't affect their lives monday through saturday and i thought man that is a parallel to us right now we are in a similar situation where where we have a formal religion and there are those that that are out there in the political arena they say they don't care if you if you're religious but they don't want that religiosity to have any impact in how you vote or how what you believe about social issues or or what you believe about the governance of the United States they don't want you to have any say in that that they want you to have a formal religion without any real um real effect from it and that's not what god wanted and so jonathan edwards preached a sermon a sinner in the hands of an angry god and he reawakened the conscience of the united states of america and individual men and women boys and girls started getting real deal say they were the they called them the, the new lights and and whitfield the great evangelist went up and down uh the the colonies and then over into england and europe and 
was just preaching powerful messages where sometimes as many as 30,000 people would come to an open field to listen to Whitfield preach. And I mean, just amazing things. Man, we need that. We we need another great awakening in these United States of America. We need we need a, 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 a Christianity that affects every area of our life. Look, if your Christianity doesn't change you, Monday through Saturday, it's not Christianity. You're you're not saved if it doesn't change you Monday through Saturday. If you live like the world and you look just like the world and you talk just like the world and you act just like the world, but then you show up at a church service on a Sunday and you think somehow that makes you right with God, look, popping in at a church doesn't make you a Christian any more than standing in a garage makes you a car. You need to have your heart touched by God. You need a real deal salvation. And we need we need to pray that God raises up another Jonathan Edwards and we can see a revival spread across this nation. We desperately need it where men and women are connected to God, not drawn on the government, not drawn on formality, not drawn on all this other stuff, but we're really connected to God and have a, 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 a Holy Spirit sent revival that transforms everything. Let's begin to pray for that, shall we? Dear Lord God, I thank you for this day. And I do pray that you would be with us as a nation, God. We we are so wicked, God. We have, we have divorced ourselves from any kind of reality in our walk with you. And when we become formal at best and almost agnostic and atheist at worst, God. And I pray that you would forgive us of that. And I pray that you'd help us to begin to move into a, another great awakening where the the nation as a whole is a grassroots level we begin to hear about the spirit of god moving in a profound way in all of our lives forgive us god for our coldness our deadness help us to to move into new realms of victory in our walk with you thank you for all that you've done in jesus name amen hey god bless you you have a good night